We are one people. Remarks to a civil rights rally. Croton on Hudson, New York, June 16, 1963. My name is Lorraine Hansberry. I'm a writer. I think you know that I am your neighbor in Croton, and I'm very proud of our community. I understand we have more than 100 people outside today. And it's my privilege to be the chairman of this meeting this afternoon, which has assembled all of us here in response to an extraordinary mood in our country, to a very great mood in our country, one which now presumes to finish up the unfinished business of American life, the disgraceful unfinished business of American life, a mood which dares to present to the American people as a whole the fact that while it is proper, as I always do, to observe that there really is no such thing as the new Negro, and I am always emphatic about it because, among other things, I try to be something of an amateur student of Negro history, and there hasn't been a period in the history of this country, or for that matter, the New World, when the Negro people have not fought valiantly, persistently, for their freedom. As one person said, it is not particularly new that Negroes are now determined to fight for their voting rights throughout the South. What is new is that the atmosphere in the world is so completely different that the solution that the races used to apply at will, which was simply to drop the insurgents into the local rivers around Dixie, is now different. A new world. And the responsiveness of our people to that fact is the thing I think that draws all of us here this afternoon. The responsiveness of the people of Birmingham and Jackson and throughout the South, and representatives of which we have with us this afternoon. Finally, I think we are all, if not to the point of exhaustion, heard of the meeting that some people, myself among them, had with the Attorney General of the United States not too long ago. And there were many references that became famous on that occasion. One of them that I'm proud to say, since it was my remark, <laughs> had significance then, and I'm going to repeat it, most of us there felt was the telling statement. It was when, during the genuine heat of the discussion, and our speaker today, Mr. Jerome Smith, had indicated to the Attorney General that the passion and the absence of patience of a sorely oppressed Native American people is beyond anything that we can sit around and be polite about anymore that the Attorney General exhibited some impatience. And it was at that juncture and feeling free that I was speaking for every single Negro and indeed white ally in that room as there were, that I suggested that the Attorney General re-examine his impatience because while there might be in that room some of the celebrated figures of whom we all know, the qualitative change in the struggle for Negro freedom was that we are not remotely interested in the old insulting concept of the exceptional Negro. We are not remotely interested in any tea at the White House. That what we are interested in is making perfectly clear that between the Negro intelligentsia and the Negro middle class and the Negro this and that, that we are one people, and as far as we are concerned, we are represented by the Negroes in the streets of Birmingham.